Hello and welcome to episode number 79 of the Scottish History Podcast. This one, of course, has been a long time coming. I do apologise for my tardiness. However, I am hoping now to be back on a more regular basis. Uh, My name is Owen Innes and this week we are going to be continuing our journey around the Isle of Skye, heading from Sligachan down towards Glen Brittle and the little village of Carbost. So please join me for episode number 79 of the Scottish History Podcast. So first of all, after we leave from Sligachan, we start heading on to the Minganish Peninsula on the Isle of Skye. We're going to be following the signs for the Talisker Distillery. Now, Along the roadside, you're going to see plenty of farmland and, of course, with the usual heavy rain that usually is surrounding the Isle of Skye, you're also going to see quite an awful lot of waterfalls. Now, this whole time, that black coolant at Sligacan will also be alongside you on your left-hand side. You will then see a road sign heading for Carbost, uh, which then turns down to the left. Now, at this particular junction, you will also spot a wooden scarecrow in the middle of the junction. Now, this scarecrow is actually called a Tatty Bogle. A tatty bogle is basically a scarecrow, um, taking the word tatty meaning potato and bogle is some kind of scary mythical being. So these tatty bogles, these sort of wooden uh, sculptures, were placed in potato fields to scare away any of the birds from managing to eat the potato crop. Now, so you follow that road down to the left, you'll then come across another left-hand turn. Now, this one is signposted for the Glen Brittle Campsite and Cafe. This turning leads you towards the Instagrammer's favourite fairy pools. Now, the fairy pools are situated within Glen Brittle itself and form part of the River Brittle that runs through the Glen. The water that supplies the so-called fairy pools comes down from the towering aforementioned Black Coolin Mountains, which dominates the area. Now, these pools are as a result basically just of water erosion. The water falls in the area and uh, the walk itself uh, is absolutely stunning. It takes roughly 30 minutes to walk to the main pools themselves. It can take up to 45 minutes to get to the uh, the largest pool or the, 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 the first pool, I suppose, that you come to. Um, so if you ever are going to visit the fairy pools, make sure that you give yourself plenty of time. Now, during the summer, the pools will normally form a kind of lovely aqua blue colour. However, without any rain, the pools can seem a little bit empty, of course, due to there being no water to actually fill them. Now, the site here also has a long-standing past with clan feuds. The main two clans on the Isle of Skye were the McDonald's and the McLeod clans. Now, they had long been at war with each other on the island, but sometime around 1599 or 1600, Rory MacLeod tried to make peace with the MacDonalds by offering to marry his sister, Margaret MacLeod, to Donald MacDonald. The marriage, however, was subject to a contract referred to as a handfast. Now, this meant that the couple would live together for a total of one year and one day. And if by the end of that time they had not had a child, they would then separate. However, if a child was born, they would then marry. Well, after the one year and one day, Margaret MacLeod had not born a child, but had also 
just so happened to have lost sight in one of her eyes. Donald MacDonald decided to send Margaret back to her brother Rory by tying her up, placing her backwards on a one-eyed horse, followed by a one-eyed servant and a one-eyed dog back to Dunvegan Castle. Rory, of course, was not amused, and so declared war once again on the MacDonalds. The MacLeods then devastated MacDonald lands on the Trotternus Peninsula on Skye, of course, which we are going to eventually get round to, leading the MacDonalds to attack the lands of the MacLeods on the Isle of Harris. Now, these battles have now become known as the Wars of the One-Eyed Women. This then led to the Battle of Caranish on the island of North Uist in the summer of 1601. In response for the attack in Harris, the Clan MacLeod raided North Uist to seize goods left behind by the locals in the Trinity Temple at Caranish. Upon hearing of this, Donald McKeon of Clan Ranald, along with 15 men, ambushed the MacLeods as they ate breakfast in the temple. Now, as a result of this, only two MacLeods survived, and Donald McKeon suffered a blow to his arm with an arrow. However, he did recover. Now, side note, this battle is regarded as the last battle to be fought with bow and arrows on the British Isles. Now, about three weeks later, McKeon was headed back to Skye to tell the MacDonalds of his victory. However, a particularly violent snowstorm forced McKeon to seek shelter on Harris, MacLeod territory. At Rodal, Rory MacLeod was present. Now, his page was in fact the godson of Donald McKeon. Now, McKeon asked his godson if they could have shelter on the island. And when asked, Rory MacLeod is said to have remarked that he would not deny shelter on this night, even to his worst enemy, the weather was that bad. So the MacLeods gave shelter to Donald and his men. The tensions that night at dinner were so severe that the page ended up telling Donald and his men that the seas were now clear to sail to the Isle of Skye, and Donald and his men snuck out and sailed away. This was unbeknownst to the MacLeods, who later that night set fire to the lodgings that Donald and his men had been staying in. However, the lodgers were already gone. This all then ended following the Battle of Cernacrich, or Ben Killen. Now, I'm probably, as usual, butchering the Gaelic pronunciations of these words, so please forgive me, there's a couple more later on, so please forgive me for mispronouncing some of these. Now, at this battle, the MacLeods were very heavily defeated. After the battle, the Scottish Privy Council forced the two clans to surrender. The MacDonalds ended up surrendering to George Gordon, the first Marquis of Huntley, and the MacLeods surrendered to the Duke of Argyll. The end of the feud was marked by a three-week-long celebration at the MacLeods' Dunvegan Castle. There ended the last clan feud and the last battle to take place on the Isle of Skye. Now, from the fairy pools, if you keep following the road, there are a couple of other sections that are known really to tour guides like myself as the fake fairy pools. The first one that you'll come across, or the one that mainly I would stop at, is right across the road from the Glen Brittle Youth Hostel. So check out that one. It's literally a two-second walk up the top of the hill, and there's a lovely little pool there. But if you keep following the road through Glen Brittle, you will arrive at the Glen Brittle Bay and beach with the sea loch, Loch Brittle, ahead of you. The beach itself is made up of black volcanic sand and is simply stunning. Here you can have a rest and even visit the Glen Brittle campsite and Coolin Coffee Company, 
but they are only open between the 1st of April and the 30th of September. Now from here we're then going to head back, we're going to travel back past the Fairy Pools and head to Talisker Distillery in the village of Carbost. Now Carbost is the largest settlement in the Miningnish Peninsula due to the distillery. The distillery itself was founded in 1830 by Hugh and Kenneth McCaskill, who had leased the land from the Clan MacLeod. They also leased the nearby Talisker House. They chose to name the distillery after the nearby estate, which is about five miles away, and Talisker House, rather than name it after Carbost, for unknown reasons. Now, in the early days, Talisker Distillery would triple distill their spirit, much like they would do and still do over in Ireland. However, they did change to the more common double distillation in 1928. The distillery itself features five stills, consisting of two wash stills and three spirit stills. Now, the distillery itself has actually suffered two fires within its lifetime. The first was in 1948, which only destroyed grain and over 100 empty whisky casks. No whisky was harmed during the course of that fire. But there was another fire in 1960. This fire completely destroyed the entire stillhouse, so five brand new stills were made, making exact replicas of their original stills. Now, the distillery itself now is not owned by a family. It's now owned by the Diageo conglomerate. The tour of the distillery, however, is not particularly one I would personally recommend. There are far better whiskey distillery tours out there at other distilleries. But if this is, of course, your only chance to get into a distillery, please go for it. Talisker whiskey itself is a very pleasant peated whiskey. Quite sweet, but also quite earthy at the same time. There's a little bit of that peat smoke in there. To me, the whiskey is pretty unremarkable, but by far nowhere near the worst whiskey in the world. Obviously, this is just my personal opinion. If you love Talisker, go for it. Now, there are other notable places to visit within the Mingnish Peninsula. Uh, these include Talisker Bay Beach, which is a lovely beach with waterfalls that cascade off of the cliff sides, as well as the lesser known, even to me as I've only just discovered it myself, Dun Ardtrek Broch. Now, brochs in particular are something that I wish to talk about in the future, but with experts that know a little bit more about them than I do. So I'm hoping within the next few weeks to have an interview with someone who can tell us all about these absolutely fascinating, uh, brilliant structures from back in the day. So folks, that's going to be it for this week. We've now completed the Mingingnish Peninsula. Next up is going to be the Duranish and the Waternish Peninsulas. Um, as we continue our little loop around the Isle of Skye. After that, the next episode after that is going to be on the Trotternish Peninsula, probably the most famous of Skye's peninsulas, including Portree, which should really complete our journey around the Isle of Skye. So thank you very much once again for listening. If you want to get in touch for any reason, you can do so via the uh email so that's uh, scotthistorypod at gmail.com the website is www.scotthistorypod.com and if you would like to donate to keep this podcast available for everyone you can do so via the patreon page which is patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash scotthistorypod once again, folks, it's been a pleasure to bring you another episode of the Scottish History Podcast. And as usual, I'll speak to you again next time.